I'll be right there. Um, oh, there's some participants waiting. Okay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it said the host would like me to speak. Yes. Hi. Who's this? Oh, it's Arlie. Yeah. I, yeah. We'll we'll be starting I, very soon. Hold on. Yeah. Th thank you. I just came to listen. Okay. Well, <laughs> if you have questions, feel free to ask. Thank you. We have to wait till there's a quorum before we can start. <clears throat> Alan, while we're waiting, we have um, a couple of, uh, I should have checked the species. As fur, I believe they're spruces. Maybe they may be firs by our entrance. And one of them started losing, lower branches started dying and it's gradually going up the tree. I wonder if you know about whatever be causing that. It seems like now the second one's got the first branch that's dying. Um, you know, if they're spruce, like a blue spruce, it could be Cytos for canker. Is there anything to do to save the tree? It's like it's going to spread through the whole tree. You can treat it with, they do have um, like a fungicide that's, you know, help slow the spread of it but um it's a naturally occurring fungus in the environment essentially um that splashes around and kills the uh lower branches and kind of works its way up the trunk yeah, that sounds like what it is but it, that's it without looking at the tree i can't really tell but that's what it sounds like say that again without lo looking at the tree i can't really all right give a good diagnosis Next time you're in the area, what's the name of the disease? Um, uh, Cytosper canker would be potentially one of them. Cytos. Cytospora. Okay. Okay, I'll look that up. And, yeah. All right. So uh, we have three of us. We need one more person to have a. Uh, quorum one more member of the committee we have a bunch of guests uh, so we'll introduce the guests as soon as uh we have a quorum let me call up the agenda come on committee members where are you And Julian's trying to get in and can't. Um...
Yeah, it's it seemed like there was something wrong with um the way to get in this month. I was like I had to try a bunch of different ways to get in. Well, how did you get in? You didn't use my link apparently. Yes, I did. I find like that you finally sent me that email like however you got that extra link, I don't know. And then well, that's the link I put on the town. Okay. Cause like I, I didn't get an email that I usually get, and then, um, and then I tried to get in through the town calendar, and it wouldn't let me in. Hmm. And I've oh, had like weird. a weird day of like dealing with computer glitchy navigating technological weirdness so it's it kind of was like just the perfect topper to the day um can you hear me yes i just want to say possibly i've been having a computer problem where the time on the um computer is not correct so then i was trying to get into something and i couldn't and it was because the time wasn't correct so I don't know if, if your time is correct on your computer, then that's not it. But I was having a similar problem. Not today, a, a different day. Yeah, it seems like the link worked for me. All of you used the link on the town website that came in. <laughs> Kathleen, Michael. Okay, Julian got it now. So, okay. And Sarah said she can't make it. Sorry for the delay, everyone. Is anybody here from Brit? Uh, so Julian's coming in now. Okay, well, we have a quorum. Huzzah. <laughs> so welcome everyone. Um, I'm gonna promote the panelists, everyone, if you want. You don't have to be promoted to panelist. Okay. It's running a little late because of kids stuff. Okay. And uh, I think it's the four of us for now then. So let's get started. Um, welcome everybody. We have um, four visitors, if I can find my... Okay. Oh, stop sending me messages. I gotta <laughs> shut that off. They're relevant to this, but uh, okay. So um, yeah, I'll have the visitors introduce themselves and uh, explain what brings them here. I'll start, Michael. Uh, oh, yes. Excuse me one second. Sure. Ellen, can you be the secretary today? Since Bennett and Britt aren't here. I'm sure you're just going to have to give me a second to catch up. Okay. So we'll get your name uh, officially in the record soon, but Michael, go ahead. Uh, yes, I'm Michael Lipinski. I'm from 167 Shootsbury Road in Amherst. I'm a member of uh, Smart Solar Amherst. And I have a statement to read tonight, and uh, I'm looking for your reaction to this statement. Okay, thank you. And Brooks, you've been here several times, so you can just say hello, but Hi. yeah. And uh, Arlie? 
Oh, hi. I just came because I'm curious and I wanted to hear what you're all about. Okay, welcome. Thank you. And Kathleen. <clears throat> Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, I'm just curious about what goes on in this committee, and uh, I am looking forward to anybody who can protect trees in the town of Amherst. So I'm interested in hearing what you have to what you're doing. Thank you. Great. Well, welcome. You, this is the right place for that. And right. David, uh, David, you've been here before, but you can say hello. Hello. I also want to congratulate Julian on getting into University of Massachusetts. Um, congrats. And also, Thanks. I just graduated from there in the same department. So I have a lot of connections related to trees, if you're ever interested. That's awesome. I'm studying um, environmental sustainability and uh, urban forestry. So that is That's great. I really appreciate it. Of course. Cool. OK. Um... That taken care of. Uh, let's have Michael, why don't you read your statement now? I think is the best thing. Here. Um, so, as I said, I'm a member of Smart Seller Amherst, and uh, I'm representing them here tonight and uh, bringing this statement and hoping that you'll respond to it. Um, it's possible that you may have seen some of our lawn signs around town. Uh, and if so, you may also be aware that. Pure Sky Energy, which is a Colorado company owned by a Montreal-based Fiera Infrastructure and Palisade Infrastructure Group, has proposed a 41-acre industrial solar facility in a residential neighborhood off of Shootsbury Road in Amherst. Five years after it was announced, the project is still under review by various boards in town. The current plan is to replace 41 acres of forest with 10 acres of solar panels and battery storage. It's presently before the ZBA in town and may soon be making another appearance before the Conservation Committee. It's a complex project that has not received a lot of publicity, so you might not be aware of the full scope of the proposal. You can find more information about the project at our website, which is Smart Solar. Amherst.org. Smart Solar Amherst is aware of your own efforts to protect and plant shade trees in Amherst, and we've seen you in action along the streets and roads of our town. We've observed the amount of time and energy your group puts into efforts to protect individual trees in town. You know how important trees are and why. What you may not know is that the proposed Shootsbury Road Solar Facility will clear cut over 6,000 trees with a five inch caliper or more at breast height. In addition, thousands of smaller immature trees and plants will be destroyed in the cutting and grubbing process. This level of forest destruction in Amherst is unprecedented. It's not a routine logging operation conducted with reforestation in mind. The forest ecosystem will be totally destroyed and replaced with steel, aluminum, plastic, glass, and silicone. We hope that the Shade Tree Committee members will take a close look at this proposed project and, and add your voices to the many other Amherst residents that are in opposition to this environmentally disastrous proposal. Thank you, and I can answer any questions you might have. Um. Michael, if I could ask a question, um, have you like looked at um, the legality of this? Like, it, it, is it on private property? Do we actually have control to say, no, you can't do this? Well, it, it certainly is on private property. The uh, property is owned by the Coles Land Company. Right. And um, there are you know, lots of hoops that they, the company has to jump through and do it the, in the ZBA, but especially in the conservation committee with this project, because it's a, it's a site that is just covered with wetlands and the wetlands are in positions that really make it difficult to put this type of project in that, in that spot. 
we have hired a um, a wet a wetlands person who does this for a living, who studied the proposal and basically has said that this is the type of site he would tell his clients not to build on. Um, but five years later, they're still trying to build on it. And I, I'd like to say that they're not much closer to having it happen today than they were five years ago. So it just keeps going on and on. And uh, it's, it's difficult for people in town to kind of galvanize an action around it or be aware of it because it's just this low level project that doesn't really rise to a crescendo. It just, it's just there. And um, our group has been following it the entire time and will continue to follow it right through you know, the entire process. But we put out signs recently that's gotten a little bit more public interest, but it's complicated. Um, it's an inappropriate facility for where it's being um, proposed. It's right, it's right in a residential neighborhood. It's zone residential. So that's where the ZBA is involved. They have to give a special permit to put an industrial facility in a residential area. But because it's a solar project, um, there's special consideration that the state gives to these things. And uh, we're hoping that the environmental issues that are involved will override those. Um, I think probably most of us on the committee would totally are opposed to this project. We have talked about it before. I know Julian's on the, in the smart solar group with you. Um, it's not in our legal purview. We, we're in charge with taking care of street trees and judging about street trees. But I think we could make a, a statement or individually certainly write to the zoning board and things like that. So um, does anyone have any other thoughts? I am, I'm sorry, I just missed a few things. Um, how many trees did you say will be cut? Yeah, we've been asking them for quite a while, how many trees will be cut? And we finally did get an answer. And that's over 6,000 trees with a five inch caliper or more at breast height. And you guys knowing trees can understand what, what all that means. And of course, those are just the trees that are that size. In addition, every single living tree on that site is going to be grubbed out and scraped out. So there are a lot more uh, immature trees and plants that are gonna be destroyed. But one of the things that, if you're on the fence about it, is this, is this a good idea or not to, do, to ruin forests for solar? On our website, we have two videos that were filmed at nearby in Wilbraham. And uh, there was a guy who flew over a site that was under preparation there by Pure Sky. And he happened to catch it on a day when they were taking the trees out. And he flew his drone over it. And he has a nice 20 minute film of what it looks like when they clear cut these things and what, and what the ground ends up looking like at the end. There's a second one that he did about a month or two later where um, you can see the site after it's been completely um, cut. And also you get to see a 5,000 cubic yard pile of stones that got scraped up in the, in the process that uh, are just piled up. And you get to hear the uh, the pile driver that's breaking the big stones into little stones right in the backyards of people who uh, live maybe 150, 200 feet away from this project. So it, it'll, it'll give you a, a good picture into what, what happens at these sites. Because a lot of people, a lot of times they're built way in the forest and you don't get to see what's going on. And um, this is an opportunity for you to see that for, for better or worse. I know what, uh, I have met with Julian before years ago. He was probably just out of middle school when I saw him. That's how long the project has been going on. Um, and he, certainly he's been active in Smart Solar Shoots Ferry and in Amherst. So, but I would urge you, but we're getting more people, individuals to write letters. And we're finding that's useful because the pile is growing. 
Uh, it used to be that we just had a small group that was constantly showing up at meetings and putting in their two cents. But as each individual writes a letter, it gets added to the pile of opposition. And any small letter that you can write or attend these ZBA meetings or conservation committee meetings and put in your public comment there, all those would be useful. All right, thank I, you. Go ahead. Henry, can I just add something? Just so, the, um, so obviously we, do, we don't really have any, you know, the tree award does any jurisdiction over the project, um, either does the committee as we've stated, um, but you know, they will have to, you know, improve the power distribution system on the road mm -hmm. and they're gonna have to do a lot of road clearing. You know, they're gonna have to do an awful lot of pruning and, and things to make that road um, able to take such, you know, kind of heavy equipment that's gonna be going up and down there. And um, mostly, I don't know, I've never seen the plan. I don't know where they're proposing to connect this to the grid. Um, yes, I can I can explain sure. that to you if you'd like. Sure. It's uh, it, it, it they look for good interconnection points, and this one really doesn't have a good interconnection point. If you know Shutesbury Road and you know where Wagner Wood is, th that would be the interconnection point. So they have to upgrade to three phase wiring from Wagner Wood all the way down Northeast Street around the S curves up towards Flat Hills Road, up Shutesbury Road. And I imagine, Alan, you know what Shutesbury Road is like as far as the tree situation there and the power line situation. So I think your point really is a good one. Um, it's They're going to have to do some clearing on that street in order to upgrade to three-phase power there. The interconnection point would be right at the sharp corner on Shutesbury Road, which is just, a, um, I think it's 187 Shutesbury Road. So yes, it's about a two mile upgrade of, of the power lines to three phase power in order to pull this project off. So that means making, putting in uh, 40 foot poles, with yes. cross arms, right now most of it's single phase or, or no wire at all. Um, and uh, a good portion of it is heavily treated at the moment. That would, it would require significant tree removal to um, do that. So that would be where the Shatrick Committee could be asking those questions if the project yeah. goes forward. Um, that would be the, the angle. That's a real good point. I appreciate that. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, about the project, I appreciate what you said, Michael. Um, my question is just what um, you said that there were 6,000 trees that they were going to take down about um, and then when you look at it in terms of land, how much of that land will actually be covered by solar and how much of it will just be sort of batteries and field? Right, that's, that, that's one of the interesting things about this is how little surface area the solar panels cover. Uh, it's 41 acres of, they call it areas of disturbance that's code for we're gonna cut down all the trees and scrape out all the living things in that area. So that's 41 acres that gets, that gets that grubbing, logging and uh, stumping treatment. Out of that 41 acres though, they're going to put 10 acres of solar panels. Now I don't wanna deceive you in, in, in any way. I'm talking about 10 acres of, of total coverage if you were to lay every solar panel out on flat ground there, there would be 10 acres of solar panels. Now, obviously you don't do that in a solar facility in New England. Those solar panels are mounted on, um, on uh, racking systems. Um, and so they do get spread out more across that 41 acres. But if you were to take the same 10 acres of panels and stick them on roofs, you would be covering 10 acres of roofs with solar panels and no trees would be hurt. So it's another way that the project is really wasteful in a way where it's taking out so many trees to put in solar panels that could be put in other places without that type of damage. Um, the other thing to know about this project is that originally it was going to be solar panels in a fixed uh, position. In other words, they'd be on a steel rack at a certain angle and they would stay that way. 
the newest proposal has them on on a uh, system that moves with the sun. So it's added an extra level of complication to the project. And each one of those- Excuse uh, me, Michael. Uh, yes. In the interest of time- um, Sure. <laughs> what we can do, yeah. Um, Alan, are we allowed to make a, a motion on this or is this something we'd need to post in next month's agenda? Yeah, I mean, it's something you put on the, the agenda for next month and discuss it. And you, we can get a little background information but, and try to put in a request for more information. You know, if it's going through the design review board, no one's reached out to me as tree warden to say, gee, there's going to be, you know, they'll get approval to do the project. And they can say, well, we need to do tree hearings to take down, you know, 50 trees. Um, so right. it's, it's a good time to ask those, start asking questions. Yeah. Okay. Would we ask design review or would we ask um, zoning ZBA for? I would start the, with the planning, the planning department. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Okay. And then see where they tell you. Julie, is that something you'd like to take on asking them? Was that directed at me? Yeah, would you be interested, would you be willing to contact uh, the planning board and request that information on how they're planning to get it on the roads and um, any other questions for any other information we might need? And we'll put yeah. it on the agenda for next month. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to email, I presume, Christine Brestra um, and ask her, I guess, if do you want to send me a list of questions or what we're really looking to get at? Mm -hmm. Henry? Um, I don't think I have those questions. I mean, maybe you talk to Alan or maybe with, to okay. Michael and come up with the sure. list. Okay. Sure. I mean, and I have I'll questions I ask personally. I just don't want to be sort of representing the entire committee with my yeah. personal, you know. And I'll put it on next month's agenda to, for us to make a decision. Okay. Meanwhile, all of us can write letters to the um, ZBA and the planning board and the yeah. review board. So, great. All right, thank you, Michael. Yeah, thank you guys, appreciate it. Yes, thank Any you. other questions for Michael? Thank you. No? Okay. Okay, uh, back to the rest of our agenda. Uh, approval of last month's minutes, the May minutes. Committee members, if you approve, raise your hand. Okay, so the minutes are approved. Uh, I think we have no other committee members here. And then um, volunteer hours. Um, everyone send me your hours. I think we'll just do it that way, be easier. Send me a text or an email with your hours for volunteer hours for the month. Don't forget we had the planting, the two plantings, and then the meeting today. Um, I'll do the chair's report next. Um, I heard from Steve Henderson at the Brook, who's interested in us planting again. And the last planting wasn't that successful. Uh, okay, good. And um, but he said that. He would talk to the mowing crew and they would pay for some of the trees this time. Last time we donated trees. So if they pay for the trees, I think that's a great place for us to uh, plant again, especially if they're going to take responsibility for keeping the, the mowing and, uh, and weed whackers away from the trees. Um, and Alan suggested that we maybe combine it with something at one of the other developments in the area, boulders. So that would be something we would reach out or maybe have Mindy Dom reach out since it's in a environmental justice area, she was willing to do that. What do people think? Yeah. I think that's a great idea. And I I like um including Mindy Dom and stuff because she's got a knack for getting results. Okay. And hey, um, I, I have a thought about this. Um, yes. which is just that um it you know, it obviously it's frustrating for everybody if we plant trees and they get mowed down, but it it makes me think like the neighborhood didn't really buy into this. It was just like, oh, somebody planted some trees. Now the trees are gone. Who cares? So to me, it seemed like before we spend all our energy and and make some money and plant these trees, we need to know that the the neighborhood cares about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, that project initially started because a couple of the neighbors came to us 
but yeah, I guess they didn't get enough people in the development to do that. Right, right. So I, I don't know quite how to proceed with that, but it, but it does seem to me like either the neighborhood is excited about having some trees or they don't care and they're going to get cut down again. Okay. Another two things I think might be worth noting is first to sort of drum up some interest. We could um, hand out pamphlets in the neighborhood or attend one of the like mobile market things um, and sort of alert people that we're going to be doing this and gauge how interested people are, ask them to show up and help, et cetera. Um, so we could do that to spread the word. The other thing I'd just say is, um, we'd want to do it in both English and Spanish. Um, I know at least me personally, I have plenty of friends whose families only speak Spanish in that neighborhood. So that might be a worthwhile endeavor too, because there may just be a language barrier rather than an interest mm. barrier. Right. Mm. I'd be glad to, um, help with translating documents if we have like a, a handout or something. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, I'll talk to Steve again and see if they have a um, an email list or an address list that we could reach out to people and see if he has a way to reach out to people as well. There. All right, that's good. That's good ideas. And um, we don't have plans for the fall planting yet, do we, Alan? Uh, oh, we have some ideas. Nothing. Obviously, yeah. we can make changes anytime. We were talking about doing a gatehouse was one of them okay. um, so so maybe one of the fall plantings or else next spring could be that planting and some of the trees we planted did survive at least as of a few months ago so uh, it'd be interesting to look at that again henry what was steve's last name henderson thank you yeah okay uh what else do i have um Oh, uh, scheduled our July workday yet? Yeah, well, that's on the agenda coming up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the trees that we planted at Misty Meadows, Alan, uh, one of them needs to be staked. The oak. Yep. Have you looked at that or anything? Yeah, I was there today. Okay. I gave it some water. Um, I have to come back with the stakes to stake it. So. Okay, yeah. Um, and Anna Carter from there sent me a, an email. Um, she's wondering if we'd be willing to water those trees when we water the tree across the street. Uh, I didn't hire Is, is Misty Meadows the tree in, on Stanley Park? Across from Stanley like Park. It's not, on Stanley Street? Um, yeah, I just actually drove past there like an hour ago and I was noticing that one tree in particular looked a little sad. Um, he is staked up actually already. I think someone staked him up, but he's, he's staked up in a very loose way and he looks a little thirsty. Mm -hmm. I watered those this morning. Um, those three trees were watered this morning. Okay. Um, and, uh, someone did try staking it. They tied a piece of cloth around it, a piece of bamboo. Um, but it, all the oaks that we got from that planting, um, they're doing what swamp white oaks do when they're young like that. They kind of lose their structural integrity and they just go limp. They literally will just like bend over <laughs> to <laughs> flop. <laughs> they won't break or snap. They just kind of lose their structural integrity and just fall to the ground. Um, so we've been staking all those trees. Um, well, they, they want to grow in the forest where they would be trying to grow fast and tall as to beat out the other trees. And so they don't worry about getting fat yet, but yeah, <laughs> but sweet, uh, we need a little bit of fat on them. Yes. So, all right, great. Um, I will contact her and say, we'll water it some, but really it's their responsibility to water those trees, even if they're farther away from the houses. I'll respond to her on that. Um, Two events coming up with the Tree City USA thing and the Tree Wardens Dinner. Alan, you could talk about those during your um, check in. Okay. I just flagged it as something. Uh, the nursery care, but I think that's also on the agenda. Um, yeah, that's on the agenda. So we'll talk about I'll share the agenda now. Um, okay. Can you all see that? 
Yep. Good. Okay. Um, she's so we talked about. Um, congratulations, Julian. Yes, yeah, an order from all of us. <laughs> um, I had a thought, Alan. Professor Picklethorn actually does talks. Picklethorn. And yes. so we were looking for someone to do a um, a, uh, a talk for Arbor Day. Arbor Day. Do yeah. that. But maybe rather than bring in a professor or someone to talk to adults, we could have Professor Picklethorn come next year and do it as a more children's event. He's, he's, an, he's very in demand, a very popular professor. Um, he is from Canada. So um, he was here because of the ISA conference and the uh, tour to trees. And they had him um, visiting schools along the bike tour, um, the bike race. Um, so that's why he was around. Um, I'm not saying he wouldn't come. It's just we'd have to get in early and you know, maybe get other communities nearby that may want him to talk to. So. Yeah. But we How much? Money to do yes, that. He, he probably has a high speaking fee then if he's in demand. Yeah. I don't know what it is. So. Probably, yeah. But keep that as a, as a thought. Um, I think that's all I have. Um, Did everybody get a copy of his kids' workbook? I don't know if they were yeah. at the carpet table. I got one. It's good. It's cute. Yeah, I looked through it too. It was good. It looked like it's perfect for like third and fourth graders. Okay. All right. So that's the chair's report. Uh, mm -hmm. Julian, do you have something to add? Uh, that all sounds pretty good. Um, I'd like to get over and mow the, um, the nursery at some point. I checked by it uh, this afternoon and the grass is getting a little tall. Um, so I'd like to get over and mow that. And then the other thing is just, we ran out of mulch for the trees on Snell Street, I think. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking about that. And then the other thing is just that, um, is it on the agenda? Nope. Um, Tree City USA, uh, I will be attending that um, conference on the 18th. Nice. Good. All right. Thank you. Uh, Tree Warden, now on your report. Um, yeah, Julian, actually, strange that you, funny that you mentioned both those items because that's one of the tasks I might be giving you tomorrow is to um, Sounds water great. the nursery and uh, mow the lawn down there <laughs> and mulch the trees on Snail Street. Um, Right. Let's see. So um, uh, the Executive Office of Environmental Energy, Environment and Energy, I think it is, um, EOEA, um, they have announced their new Cool Corridors program. And so it's a grant program <clears throat> designed mostly for um, environmental justice communities. And it can pay for trees, can tree planting, tree care, watering, mulching. It can pay for removal of the pervious surface uh, where trees can be planted. Um, so they have on the 18th, they have a, a webinar um, kind of listening session to so people can learn more about the grant. Um, you know, so that would be, it would be interesting to, you know, take all of our environmental justice neighborhoods and see what kind of proposal we could come up with. <clears throat> um, it would be a big project. We wouldn't necessarily even need to do the planting. It could be done by contractors, but we would essentially be working on the educational component and outreach component of it. So um, reaching out to the people that live in the complexes, the property owners, the maintenance people, um, and uh, you know, They've got a lot of money. They want to plant trees in low-income environmental justice areas. So I can sh send that to you, Henry, if you want to hear more about it. Yeah, share it to the rest of the committee. Are you planning on attending that uh, webinar? I cannot. I will be at the Tree City USA Award Ceremony. I will try to do that. OK. Um, <clears throat> where are my notes here? 
Uh, Barry Roberts is proposing to move another house um, from Southeast Street, kind of behind Cumberland Farms in between Colonial Village and Cumberland Farms. There's a little farmhouse tucked away back there. Um, they're going to be, Colonial Village is expanding their, um, adding more buildings to their complex and um, Barry's gonna move the house and he wants, right now he's proposing to go down Southeast Street, turn left onto Stanley, right onto Belchtown Road, and then left onto Harkness. <clears throat> so Southeast Street would require a fair amount of pruning, but it's not too bad. Stanley Street would be a disaster in my opinion. It, it would really, um, the street's really well treated and really grown in and it needs some, actually needs some crown clearance done for road clearance, crown lifting for road clearance, but um, you know, the house is barely going to fit down the road in some places um, and it's a tall house. So, And then um, once you turn up Northampton Road, there's uh, Belchtown Road, there's more trees that need to be pruned, but nothing too serious. Um, but I'm concerned about Stanley Street. So more information to follow. Um, if they take it out, if they go right onto Southeast Street and then right onto College Street, sort of Belchtown Road, and go that route. Um, it's not a lot of tree impact, but there's a lot of wires they have to move. Um, so um, I think that's why they're trying to go down the other way, because there aren't very many wires. Um, let's see. Is there something we can do at this point about that? Not really. Um, Barry called me last Friday. I checked it out today um, and I need to get back to him and, and tell him my assessment and see if, you know, if he's willing to take the other route. Um, so we'll see. <clears throat> I also don't know the full details of the move. So, um, you know. Uh, North Commons moving along. We're starting to remove some of the tree protection boards that were kind of, you know, strapped to the trunks of the trees. Um, <clears throat> there's loaming seeding areas. Um, they, before they loamed and seeded the areas, they went in and scraped away the wood chips and then went in and kind of did a, a um, used a little machine that kind of busts up soil compaction a little bit. Um, and then they loamed on top of that. So, um, pretty good so far on minimizing tree impact. Um, there's definitely tree impact, but it's we've minimized it. Uh, I'd like to have minimized it a little more, but I think we got the best we're gonna get. Um, and then they'll be planting trees probably, you know, by the end of June, maybe at the beginning of July, they'll start planting trees. Um, all the structural soils in, the, Concrete's down, the tree pits have been formed. They're gonna have tree grates over them. <clears throat> They're full of structural soil that's connecting each tree pit to the other. So should be good. Um, been watering a lot of trees. So we were busy this summer, this spring and last fall. Um, so we have 92 trees right now that require watering so um and we've we've gone into a dry period and that's twice a week 92 trees um so that is taking up a fair amount of time not much we can do about it unless we start getting rain um, once the um new fiscal year hits i can purchase some gator bags but at the moment we can't purchase anything so we have yeah. We still have some money in our account. We do. Yeah. Forty thousand. You can't spend that. I don't. I don't want to spend it on gator bags yet. Um, I want to spend it on trees. It's twenty thousand. Twenty for removal and stump grinding and things, and twenty for tree planting. Yeah. Is what it was. Um, so, um, it sounds like though it hasn't been approved yet. Sounds like they are moving forward with another round of. Um, of funding for that. So hopefully come 
July 1st, we'll have an, a refresh of money in the capital mm -hmm. fund. So. Mm -hmm. It's possible they would. I thought we have a we have a twenty thousand dollar line item regularly. No, no, it's it's going to be an annual thing. Okay. Um, looking at the the town budget for at not this fiscal year, but next fiscal year. Um, so not twenty. Yeah. Not twenty five fiscal year, which is what we're going into. Um, It's going to be 26 fiscal. Um, so, town budget is going to be a mess, in my opinion. So. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, Sarah is not here, so there's no. Um, oh. Can I add one more thing? Can I, one more thing I wanted to say. Oh, that, um, so, yeah, so the, the Western Mass Tree Wardens dinner meeting coming up yeah. on the 20th um, is, is a rare opportunity to um, have someone from the, uh, the National Science Foundation come and talk about their, you know, urban forestry standard that they're going to do. Um, you know, it's, it's international, it's not national. Um, so this is like a global project on the standards for urban forestry. Um, and so that's gonna be the hour long presentation. And then the half an hour presentation um, before lunch is um, a woman, CJ, from the Conway School of Design. She has a ton of experience in, I think it was Maryland, um, working as a county arborist there, overseeing large projects. And she gives a great talk on um, tree preservation during construction projects. Um, and uh, I think it's going to be a very good presentation. So. Um, if anybody you know has a chance to go, I think it's. I'm hoping it's going to be very relevant to what we're trying to accomplish uh, in urban forestry, not just public shade trees, but the urban forest. And set the blue bonnet at five o'clock again. Five o'clock again. Yeah. All right. Um, I will go to that. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, next would be. I'll double check my schedule, but probably. Since uh, Sarah's not here, we'll skip the treasures report. Um, yeah, the social media report. Shoshana and Julian. Uh, um, yeah. Oh, okay. Julian, go right ahead. You can go first. All right. No, you. Yeah, go, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Um, I've been trying to post like relevant stuff, um, putting out like alerts for when we're gonna have our plantings in our meetings and um other interesting tidbits of, of like of forest interest in the area. Yeah, I um, posted something before and after our planting last um, Saturday, and uh, that got some traction. We got like two or three new followers. Um, other than that, I think everything's pretty good. Um, all right, so now back to the rest of the agenda. I'll share my screen again with it. Okay. So the tree nursery next steps. Uh, <clears throat> um, I'll jump in my thoughts. Um, so the oaks um, have not budded out. So every single oak that we did, unfortunately did not break bud. Uh, <clears throat> I'm still gonna keep watering them, hoping that that's just very delayed um, or they got shocked and they may force some buds or maybe they'll push some new buds. Um, so I'm gonna keep watering them. But I'm gonna, I may have to see about um, replacing replacing those. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we do need to mow it. And I think uh, we should start looking at species for next year that we can plant. There's plenty of space there. So, you know, we don't wanna plant all the trees at once. We want to kind of have them, you know, you plant a bunch of new ones and then you plant the ones that you've been growing out for a year or two. So we, we need to keep thinking about bringing in new trees. 
to grow. I still need to get the water fixed there. Again, I'm waiting for new fiscal year to hit on that one. But uh, everything looks decent. The red maples look good. The um, filberts are leafing out okay. The tulip poplars look like they got shocked, but they're doing okay. They're starting to push new buds. Some of them are doing just fine. Um, and uh, the oaks just aren't doing well. So. Once you get the water fixed, we can take over the watering. But if it's bringing in water, then you'll have to do that. Yep. All right. Well, thanks, Julian, for keeping an eye on the mowing and everything. Uh, any other questions about this or comments? No? Okay, second Saturday work days. So I'm sorry I missed the last planting. Uh, the Misty Meadows planting actually I thought went great. And the brother who was being honored with the tree on, on the park side of things, uh, he was there helping to dig and plant. And uh, quite a few people from Misty Meadows came and helped. So that was great. Um, I, how did the, uh, someone tell me about the Northampton Road planting? Yeah, that went well. Small, yeah. small crowd, but that went well. Um, we got all the trees in. There was one tree with a bunch of roots. Um, yeah, it's probably the, the biggest root like situation I've yeah. ever seen. Mm -hmm. And some of the trees still need mulch. That's basically it. And did the Girl Scouts come? Yes, they did for the first like two hours. That's yeah. Great. And I have to say, I think they're like the biggest trees we've ever planted. They were quite large. They were bald and burlap. So. Yeah. These were the trees that were donated by um, Sugarloaf Nurseries last fall. We overwintered them. Um, we have two more left in the nursery that um, I know where one of them is going. The filbert I still need to find a home for. Um, but that might it might be worth noting on the on the web page or Facebook or wherever, whatever posting we do um, <clears throat> to thank, you know, Sugar Loaf Nurseries for donating those trees that were okay. planted or something like that. Yeah. yeah, if you check the tags, there are 400 bucks a tree. So do the math. It's a pretty generous donation. Wow. We, we did send them a thank you note last fall, I believe. And we did, but yeah. it'd be nice. Yeah, I to... sent them a paper one, but it would be nice to give them some sort of like public you know, think on the media. I also want to put that on Facebook and Insta. Yeah. With the pictures of the trees. Oh, maybe nice. I don't know if it'd be worth like writing something up with a picture of the tree with the committee standing in front of it and uh, say, send to them, thanking them. Uh, yeah. Well, that picture doesn't exist yet, so we'll have to take a picture. But... <laughs> <laughs> or I can come up with something real quick, which is <clears throat> Air trees or something. Do you will you take care of that, Shoshana? Yeah. Great. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, back to the rest of uh, things. Let me just see if it was no, okay. Um, B City. That's uh, Britt's thing. She's not here, so we'll table that. Uh, Ellen, who was someone? Oh, Shoshana, you were going to reach out to Paul and Town Hall about the uh, Mary Maple table. Yeah, I um, circled back around on that um, after they didn't get back to me for a while, and then um, they still haven't gotten back to me. <laughs> okay. And so I'm really starting to think that, like, maybe, maybe it should go over to, well, also the fact that, like, the library has been halted, so I would... I was thinking like, well, geez, maybe it could go over there but, or maybe it could go to the North Amherst Library until it's done. But like, I don't know. First, I want to hear from Town Hall okay. whether or not they want to hear from it or have it. If you don't hear it, maybe it's good to put a feeler out to the town North Amherst Library. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Uh, anything new on the town tree inventory and urban forestry management plan, Ellen? Yeah, so the the um, Arbor Pro is in town, inventorying our streets. Um, <clears throat> so they should be done uh, in a week, I think. Um, it's going to be a photo finish. 
on the management plan. I wake up in, with sweats trying to figure out how I'm going to how I'm going to uh, get this management plan, and then I have to write up the whole grant thing, which is just going to be a nightmare. Um, and get all the payrolls and do all that stuff, and I have no idea. Somehow it's going to happen, but I got to make it all happen before June, you know, before the end of June. So, um, yeah. Um, if there's anything we can do to help, let us know. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Website update again. Bennett's not here. Um, he's trying to be present, but it, his family has been challenging. A lot of stuff he's been involved with. Uh, environmental justice neighborhood planting. I will speak to Mindy again. And now that we're thinking about the boulders in that area, um, see what she needs from us for that. So I'll report back next month. UMass interns is also Brit, so nothing there. State level initiatives. Uh, the update to chapter 87, the law that governs uh, street trees has been tabled again by our state house. And uh, there's a lot of frustration around that, but um, not much more we can do except keep reminding uh, Joe and Mindy that it's really important to us. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, significant tree ordinance, that's, Sarah, I don't think anything's happened on that. Solar bylaw group we sort of talked about already, and we will have the Shootsbury Solar Project on the agenda for next month. So all of us can do some research. Um, I think most of us know a lot about it already. So if we can write something up and Julian, you're gonna get more information from planning and stuff like that. Okay. Other comments, Arlie, Kathleen, Brooks, anything else to say? I don't think so. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. This was very enjoyable uh, and informative. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So uh, we will... Do this again next one, oh, sorry. Go Can ahead. You say the, the three places to send a letter to I I'm ZBA Planning Board and is it Conservation Commission? Is that right? Well that'd be good too, but the third one the of the ones we talked about earlier was Design Review Board. Design Review Board. Okay. That's great. Yeah. If you guys write letters to all of them. Stating your concerns, and as a tree committee, we will definitely speak about the concerns about the wires, the upgrade to the wires coming down the roads. Yeah. So. Um, excuse me, Henry. Yes. Is it possible that the Shade Tree Commission can be thinking about the wildlife that lives happily in the trees? So it's my understanding that uh, the forest being raised is going to mean the destruction of the habitat for dozens of uh, bird species. Yeah, we can absolutely talk about that. We talk about that with regard to street trees as well, that planting trees helps wildlife. And yeah. Because it's, it's, uh, cer it certainly appears that nobody feels like it's their jurisdiction to care about the wildlife that's in the forest that's in the process of it is being targeted for raising. Yeah, well, it is the Conservation Commission's, it's their purview, but yeah, we should definitely speak about that as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, any other comments from anybody? No? So we'll meet again in July and we'll have a planting again, second Saturday and second Tuesday for second Saturday for planting, second Tuesday for our meeting. And um, Ellen, if you can get the minutes out soon and then- Oh, wait, did we decide on where we're having our July workday? Ah, thank you, how I missed that. I think we talked about doing it up on East Pleasant Street by UMass, did we? We did, that would be a good spot. Um, also Rambling Road, not Rambling Road, um, Country Corners Road, those trees all need mulching that we planted two years ago. We got to replace, we still have to replace trees there. Hopefully I, I can do that, you know, with my crew, but um, we have lost a number of trees on that street. So. Yeah. Uh, which one should we do in July? I think the East Hampton, East Pleasant Road. East Pleasant Street, yeah. 
Yeah, okay. Possible. So I'll put that on the website and we can put that out in all the announcements that we'll have a tree work party. Instead of planting, we'll be mulching, pruning, and doing other care for weeding of the, the trees along by the university at the top of the hill on East Pleasant Street. Okay. Great. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. And uh, we'll see you down the road. Enjoy the trees. Enjoy this beautiful spring, summer weather. Thanks, everybody. Everybody. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.